Hi everyone, it's Rob Watson. Um, welcome to the Leicester Sounds, Leicester Stories, not Leicester Sounds, that's a radio station. <clears throat> welcome to the Leicester Stories uh, audio tips session. Uh, that's what I think I'm doing. This might, I'm not planning this out. Uh, I thought I would do it as a kind of uh, process of discovery. There's a couple of things that I want to uh, hit, identify which I hope will be useful. And uh, as I fumble around the screen, uh, you you might um, hopefully pick something up from that kind of shared experience. So uh, uh, don't don't shoot me if, if it's rubbish. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you some tips for using Audacity and just some things to think about when you're looking at the audio and how we can improve things. These are relatively standard across most uh, platforms for audio editing and um, but I, I tend to use Adobe Audition because I subscribe to their uh, creative uh, cloud package uh, but Audacity is free it's perfectly good it's good quality editor uh, it's just different in the way that it's laid out so let me share share the screen and here we go so hopefully you can see that. I'm going to leave it, uh, I hope it's large enough. I'm going to leave it in the middle of the screen. Let me just expand it a touch. And the idea with an audio editor is that what you're able to do is um, take a piece of audio, chop it up into pieces, mix the sound, rearrange those pieces and mix the sound levels. And this is um, called, they, they, they kind of, phrase it as destructive and non-destructive editing. So if you imagine a piece of tape, when you used to have to cut that up with a razor blade, and if you wanted to edit something, you'd put it into a different order. And that's a great way of doing stuff. Maybe we should get some tape recorders and, and play around with that kind of thing. That'd be fab. Um, I've not used tape for a long time. So a lot of what you see from the door digital audio workstation is modeled on the days of tape. And so there's a kind of crossover in terms of the way that we think about it. So we still have things like, you know, cut and copy and paste. And, and, the, and there's also a kind of crossover from word processing packages and then from video visual editing packages. So this is a visual way of editing your audio. But what's most important is that you are able to listen. And this is where a good pair of headphones comes in. Uh, and it takes time to get the listening skills uh, uh, you know, activated, if you like, to become used to listening to things. And once you start to listen to things, you start to realize poor quality sound. And there's a, <coughs> excuse me, there's a, an adage, I think it was Steve, uh, uh, George Lucas said about film, it's 50% film, 50% images and 50% sound. Now you can listen, you can watch a film with a really rubbish, crummy, uh, image but you can't listen to a film with a bad soundtrack a poor soundtrack it becomes unlistenable it's just a series of images that often make no sense and when you separate the two you start to realize how random uh, filmmaking is uh, and it's often the soundtrack that gives it continuity uh, so with, with the sound it's harder to work with sound you have to do it in a very specific way because you can't jump to a visual uh, you have to create a, a, an environment in which people can follow what is being said and what's being undertaken. And I think you're finding that from starting to learn to edit your Vox Pops. So let's find a, a file, uh, something that we can uh, open and play with. Um, so I've got a folder um, with the Leicester Stories one. I've got a test uh, media that I've been working on. And I'll open this one. It's, it's what's called a WAV file, uh, a waveform file. <clears throat> and what that means is a waveform is uncompressed CD quality sound. So what happens when you listen to things generally online is it's compressed and they take a lot of the data out. Uh, we're going to be using MP3, but there's other formats like AAC and uh, MP4 and the algorithms that do the compression have got better and better and better. So what you hear and what you perceive as a listener sounds almost as good as a uncompressed CD. Um, and that's the kind of bog standard 
Uh, video works at 48,000 kilohertz samples per second and uh, CDs are 44.1 uh, thousand kilohertz per second, uh, uh, thousand hertz per second. Uh, so the, there's a, just a slight variation in the in, in the sample size. But if you want to play something as a standard streamed MP3 through as a podcast, as WordPress, then we're looking at 44.1. And you'll see here on the this screen that it's this this particular file I've opened is at 48. And it's at what's called 32 bit, and we need to change that to uh, 16 bit and 44.1. So let's just see if we can find out how that is uh, achieved. Um, we might have to do it as a save as and open it up again. Is there a convert sample type? Um, just looking for this. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on Audacity. Um, so, so what I'll do, so when you open a piece of media, when you, a piece of audio, when you've edited it, you might need to, to do it like this. So if we're going to export it as a WAV and it's got here, 16 bit PCM. Um, so that's the one that you want. That's the CD quality sound. And I'm going to give it a different test name. Um, just to keep it on this, it's always really useful. We can ignore the metadata for now. It's always really useful to put your source files that you download off your, 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 your phone, your recording device into a folder and call it source files, and then create a second folder where you're going to edit the copy them into it that, that you can edit from this so that if you do make a mistake, you can go back to the source files, but you've kept the source files. Useful thing to do is you edit things. You might want to change the names uh, when it comes off, for example, off the zoom recorders, it gives it a name, zoom, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't tell us much. If you do a save as, and it's like Vox pop one, Vox pop two, it's just a little bit more, you know, sound effects cafe. And you, you guys have been doing that. I've seen from, the Google Drive. <coughs> so let's close this one. So close that, say project before closing, no. And then I'm gonna open um, the file that we just saved and it should be called test. Is that right? Oh, hang on. I thought it would put it in this folder. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is where I uh, okay. Let's open open this again. Um, okay, file export to WAV. That's what I didn't do. I didn't check where it was going, and it put it in the Audacity folder. It's always you know when you've got lots of folders open. So go down to here, audio projects, Lester stories, radio message test. Here we go, and I'm going to call it. I have to find out where that other folder is and delete that. Uh, you end up with lots of stray uh, files. Again, forget the metadata for now. We can do that uh, later. Um, so I'm going to file, close this one, save project before closing. No, file, open. And there we go. There's the, the file. And if I open, and now what you'll see is that it's only made a small difference with this one, but the, it just changes the, the amount of information that's stored in the file. Uh, and it creates a slightly smaller file. Um, that's not right. Uh, file, export, export to WAV, encoding 16-bit PCM. WAV, Microsoft. Replace it. Okay, file, close, no. Oh, it might have been that function. Um, let's open. No, so let's go ex uh, export again. Export as WAV. What's that export audio? What does that say? It's the same. Third time lucky. And then file, 
close save project before closing i'll pre press yes this time okay <clears throat> so what a project is in audit audacity is it keeps everything in in order the project is like a, a project template for when you use things like uh, i don't know photoshop or something is it what it does it keeps all the the, the data uh, that goes with the file. So when you open it again, it's all still, you can be halfway through an edit and it's all still in the same place. Um, so radio message test, I'll just shove it in this folder. Okay, now I'm going to be, uh, and you can see that AUP3 is the Audacity project file. Um, and that will only open up with Audacity. It won't it probably won't open up with any other uh, audio editor. Um, okay, let's see what this does. If it doesn't do anything, no, it hasn't changed it. I'll figure that out as to how that should change that, and we can change the sample rate. Um, okay, so let's go. Let's go through. <laughs> I told you it wouldn't be so well prepared. Uh, <clears throat> let's go through the uh, interface. So what you've got, first thing that you notice is you've got the audio and it looks like a what's called a waveform. So if we zoom into this uh, and get really uh, closely into the, the waveform, as you go closer, you start to see all of the individual samples uh, and it creates a kind of wave. Uh, so as you know, that kind of thing, when you're looking at audio, you, you kind of see it as a, a series of peaks and troughs. And that tells us where the intensity is and where the um where, where the uh the, the 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 most of the sound is coming from uh the bits where it's most intense is probably something where somebody's talking or something's happening um and i just want to make sure that i can you can hear the sound for this um and let's just double check with the share sound okay so that should this should record the sound as well so if i press play so it's a recording i did at the uh, market and it um is a sound of a, a a moped going past so as the moped came along it got louder and then it went quieter as it went past as well and what you can see and there's a little bar here just in the top right hand uh, right hand corner, which tells you what your levels are. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, that kind of gives you an idea. What you don't want with your recording when you when you're working with your recording device is you kind of want it to peak the maximum that the the the, the needle or the the indicator goes up to minus six we don't have to worry too much about what it is that's that, that's measured in decibels uh, and if, if it goes up to zero it kind of can lead to distortion it can occasionally hit zero and you won't have a problem but if it consistently hits zero you get what's called clipping and i'll show you might try and show you what that means uh, in a second but we want to aim for it peaking about minus six and that'll give us a good level one of the things you will notice is sometimes so if we just zoom in on, on onto this little bit, is that some things are louder than other. Now, if you opened up a music track, a modern music track, what you might find is that there's not very much variation between the peaks and the troughs. And this is what's called the dynamics of the audio. So what you have is, um, this, well, that's handy, isn't it? A nice pointer tool. It can, it, it, you know, that kind of electronic music it's very, very processed. It's got lots of what's called compression on it, and it keeps the, the this needle would hardly move. It'd be consistently near one one point, and it hardly ever drops. That's why some things on TV are very seem feel we perceive them as being very loud because they've forced up all the background sounds. What we want is we want that dynamic range, so we want it to go from loud to quiet because that's more interesting to listen to. If it was all consistently one level uh it's it's very tiring on the ears whereas if it moves in and out and it goes up and down and gets louder and quieter it's a bit more interesting now in a 30 second one minute piece of audio that might be harder to do but 
you probably get a sense as you're listening to them and as you're listening to more of them that <clears throat> that the ones where it's where it's more, more dynamic are actually more interesting. Unfortunately, radio, <laughs> mainstream commercial radio particularly, all sets it's leveled uh, 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 you know can, they compress it a lot so it sounds like a, a sludge of noise and you have all these sound effects they sound great in the pro tool sessions that the the people who make make all the, sw- the sweeps and the adverts for the stations and the promos for the stations do but for the listener the average listener it sounds terrible and if you ever try and listen into one of the commercial classical radio stations uh, the, the music is unrecognizable. When you listen to it on Radio 3, they don't use compression or they don't use it in the same way. They use it just to correct um, problems with transmission rather than actually coloring the sound. Anyway, it's kind of going off the topic, but it, it's just one of those things to kind of watch out for. Now, <clears throat> the first thing I'd say, we, we look at this and it's got a zero and it goes up to one. I think this is an indicator. Let's see, it's uh, yeah, it's it, we can change this, so we can either see what that audio is in terms of decibels, or a linear scale. And and basically, what that's telling us is how much volume, how much power there is in the sound wave. Uh, and obviously, this is a bit that's a lot louder uh, than the other bits, which are quieter. But there's still a gap. Uh, and there's still quite a gap, which means that we've got some headroom there and we can improve the volume. So if I select the audio for, oh, that's the draw tool. What's the select tool? Oh, so there we go. Go to the select tool, the time tool, and then effect. <clears throat> and we're looking for, um, what are we looking for? We're looking for, um, not amplify, normalize. There we go, normalize. So one of the good habits to get into uh, is to always uh, normalize your file. So uh, how do I select this? There we go, I've selected it now. It's called light blue. So effect, um, I'll show you what not amplify does in a second, but always start off and set it, it's, it, this is fine. Set as it is, minus one is fine. Um, and if you want to do the track separately, you can you can do, but leave them together because it's a stereo track. And there we go. That ups the general volume of the file. So now you can see that it's peaking at minus six. So if I un- edit, undo, normalize, and that's much lower. Uh, oh, let's find the bit that we were on. And it's peaking just below minus six. If I Edit, redo, normalize. And it's peaking just above. It goes into the orange. That's fine. Um, And it just means that we've got a bit more to work with. It's a bit louder. Uh, The other thing that I always do as well is I run a, uh, I use the equalizer. Um, Let's use the graphic equalizer because, click, click, there we go. Click the track, effects equalize so what the equalizer does there we go graphic equalizer is it allows you to take out some of the bottom the low frequencies like traffic noise uh, and it just kind of clears it a little bit so i kind of would but do it so again it probably depends on your headphones if you're using low quality headphones you you're not going to hear the low frequencies in the file um, so what you've got to do is, you, you know, the better the headphones are, the better the monitor speakers that you've got, then the better uh, uh, the the range of frequencies that you can hear in the sound file. And if there's a lot of distortion from traffic noise, you can minimize that by taking that out. Uh, so what does that mean? Manage. Uh, oh, there's some presets that you can do. Bass cut. Well, let's be our bass cut. I don't know what that does. And preview. So that's taken out some of the pre the, the bass sounds, but I think it sounded then a little bit kind of. Okay. It sounds generally okay to take it out, but you know, you, you have to trust your ears on this one to kind of identify it. 
So that's taken out some of the low frequency sounds. Let's have a listen to the. Yeah, that kind of rumble and noise that was behind the traffic beforehand, that's gone now uh, because it's it's taken out that low frequency noise. So it just cleans it up a little bit. And then the last thing I always do, and I don't do much to an audio track like this because if you've recorded it well in the first place, uh, then it should tend to be okay. The next thing I do, select the track, effect, uh, has it got... Um, what are we looking for? Um, we're looking for compression. Turns compressor. There we go. Um, and again, I wonder if there's like a factory preset. I know. <clears throat> so what we want, what this does, is it kind of um, takes the peaks and it pushes them down a little bit, and it brings up some of the background noise. This is set to minus 12 um and what these the two important things are the th threshold level that's the point at which that's the point where it'll start applying the compressor and then it will do it at a ratio of two to one so it's a nice little trick just to uh, kind of smooth off your audio to balance those levels uh, so it's added a bit more vo you know, volume to it. Now, one of the things I've noticed here, it's got a massive peak. So I'm going to zoom in on this section. So what I'd be interested in doing is finding out what that is. So it's a big clack sound, um, which is fine. Uh, but what you might want to do a little bit is, is just kind of... So what I'd probably do at this point is just take that down a bit, effect amplify um and i'm going to go by minus three minus three should be okay three zero um and press okay so that just takes that level down a touch you you can end up going through your file for hours just just doing these little little kind of edits on things uh, just to to get rid of some of those peaks and troughs now let's go back to the full view uh, there we go. And then what I can do is the last thing I do, effect, let's click the file, effect, um, normalize again, and then just normalize it. It just gives it that, you you know, kind of that, that little bit of extra loudness. <clears throat> it's easier to take the volume. Once you've got the file like this, it's easier to take the volume level down than it is to take it back up again. So if we, we did some recordings on Saturday where the volume rulers level was very, very low because I'd mistakenly set the record and level on the handset, on the on the Zoom to be far too low. And once we pushed it up, so I think it's on the hand on the, <coughs> forgive me, for on Zoom it was it was set at 20 and it should have been on 70. Um, but I was able to go through this process and get the volume level up. Um, what happens though is if you record in levels too low, it brings up some of the dis the background noise that's built into the file, so the distortion that's built into the file. So the best recording you can capture without clipping. Now I'll show you what clipping is if I can. So if I take this section and zoom into it, and then I'm going to amplify, um, just amplify. So effect amplify, and this time I'm going to increase it by ten. Ten dB is a lot. Um, is it going to let me do that? Oh, let's allow clipping. So this will show you. So the reason that's a good feature that it doesn't it doesn't let you push the amplification, the levels. So how? So if I press OK, now if we look at this in more detail, um, and again, I'm not a hundred percent sure how this works so we keep going in and what you can see i don't know if you can see it but you see the way that that rather than it being a, a triangle it's been cut off 
so what that do, what that what's happened there is that's distorted. So that's called clipping. It's got this straight line uh, just at the, each of the top of the peaks because it's there's no there's nowhere for it to record the data. So what it does is it just cuts it off. You've reached the limit of its ability to uh, record, you know, to 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 capture that data, and it just cuts it. So what you end up with is just and it sounds distorted. Uh, you might not recognize it. You know, when you first start, but you you begin to hear it when you. Um, that's where it should. I've, I've undone the amplification. That's where it should look like. Uh, so let's zoom out again, uh, completely. <clears throat> so so that that's the the kind of setup that I use for um, for a file. So what I'm going to do is file, um, save as. Um, Okay, I'll call this. I'm going to save a second, a second project just for, just to be awkward. Call it W two test. There we go. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to move some things around. So say we have this one here. And we kind of want to move that around. So one of the great things about doing it this way is you can identify it uh, and you can cut. And in the same way as you might with a uh, word processor, you can just check. Okay, so you can paste it in. So that's added to that. And I don't know if you could hear it, but the background noises uh, were kind of disjointed. It kind of um, ch changed from the background sound of the market with the kind of, I think there was a, a generator or something in the corner, a compressor or something in the corner. And it kind of, it sounded different. It's easy to change the sound environment. If you're in a, especially when you're outdoors, do location recording, it's much, much more difficult to get this right. Uh, but there's little trips, ticks, uh, uh, trips that you can do as you get more familiar with it in terms of cuts and things like that and crossfades. So you can crossfade sound into it. So um, I'm going to, this time, I'm going to um, crossfade into it. So if I, so one of the things you can do if you wanted to trim the material, you can click the button and it'll take either end off or the alternative if that you wanted to get rid of the stuff in between a particular point you can add silence into it <clears throat> and that can be quite useful at some point again you'll you'll get a feel for this as you kind of use it but what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy um copy this sound so copy uh, rather than bringing it in and then I'm going to put in a new um, new track and I'm going to paste that underneath it um, add new um, and we're working in stereo so you can tell we're in stereo because there's a left and a right uh, for mono it would just be one single track and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste so i've now copied the audio from here and i've pasted it into here but what we really want to do is kind of mix the two and blend the two together so that doesn't sound consistently blended but now what we need to do so one comes in and one comes out so what we need to do is is to uh, i think is it the pen tool Now, oh, this is envelope tool. That's the one that we want. So what you can do with the envelope tool is you can take a section. So you, we don't want to do the whole envelope. We just want to do a section. 
edit undo that so we just want to do a small notes doing the whole one uh, if i highlight an area here Oh, that's there we go so now what i can do is we can we can reduce and that gives a crossfade so what we've done is i've clicked using the envelope tool and i put some dots onto that blue line just at the top uh, and what it'll do is if i press play Let's just uh, mute this one so we can hear the difference. So the sound on that track now has dipped, it's gone quieter. And then it's gone louder again. So what it will enable us to do, so if I unmute this, is I'm going to do the same. Let's click this with the envelope tool. I'm going to put a click in there and a click in there. And then I think I click here and I'm going to do a fade in on this one. You can tell it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time since I've done this. I use audition and it, it, I've, I'm just more intuitive with the audition. I can do audition in my sleep. So let's, let's get the place tool. And that's kind of smoother between the two now. So that was, so what I've done is I've placed that audio into there. And rather than it just jumping in, what I've done is I've put, if we zoom in, uh, I've put a, um, so there's now, you can see the shape of the gray. It's like a fade. So it fades in gen gently. Um, so if I mute, this one and then press play on this one very difficult to hear it actually but you, a little bit of a little bit of a sound fade there let's um let's make it a little bit more prominent and do it right the way in like that because you might want to do a long fade um just so that we hear the effect and i can undo it So the background sound comes in more smoothly. One of the things you're looking at with people's ears is to not give them sudden changes. But one of the things that's really nice and you'll get skilled at this over time is just bringing up the sounds um, gently. Um, OK, so we've looked at um, doing some basic tidying up of the waveform files. I'm going to go out, zoom out completely. Uh, we've looked at doing some uh, edit you can move this now to wherever it is that you want it to fit in and say for example you are you know you've got an interview with somebody and you want to put something in beforehand and, and move it around so what you end up with actually can be a bit of a i'm going to put another add new stereo track you can end up with uh, quite a few tracks in here i would keep it to no more than four uh, tracks uh, because then you won't lose you can do it with two most of the time four at a push um, and just you know what you end up with then is like a checkerboard of different elements um, and it doesn't matter which track they're, they're placed on at, at this point as long as you're listening to it and you're able to get a sense that it's continuous um, so let's go to our Thing of you. So what we then want to do is to mix this down to a single track and generate it as a track that we can uh, share. So we're happy with the way it sounds and the, the different elements that are included. So we want to go to, <coughs> is it, um, I think we might have to click everything. Um, so they're all clicked, file. Uh, 
Yeah, so we can select all. It's probably the best way to do it. Mix. So we're going to mix down and render. Uh, mix and render to new track. So here we go. So there we go. This is now this file as a new track. Uh, I'm going to undo that because uh, it's it put it in as a new track rather than what I wanted it to do, which was um, mix and render. There we go. So this is now the audio that we've created. And I've just noticed resample. Uh -huh. So what we want them, them want to do is this is saving at 44, uh, 48, and we want to change it to 41. Uh, so that's now changed that to 41. It's still on 32, whereas it should be 30, uh, 16. So when we then go to file, export as WAV, uh, that's a 16 bit. So I'll call this uh, mix. And then, <clears throat> then the last thing that you can add to it is metadata, which is the name of the producer, the name of the album, the artist, that kind of thing, what year it was produced. And that can be quite useful. Uh, so I'm going to press OK. Uh, so that's now saved that as a WAV, but we want also to save it as an MP3 file. Uh, so that just asks you to uh, save that as a, uh, use the preset and the quality that it comes up with 170 to 210 that's fine you can actually drop that down a little bit it's a bit smaller a smaller uh, file um, and you can just press save and again it asks for metadata and you can press ok and that renders it so in our folder now we will have test Radio message test. Here we go. So we've got the audition files and then we've got the MP3 here. And you can see that the uh, the test M yeah, the test WAV file is 16 uh, megabytes and this one is 1.4. So it reduces it by about a fact, factor of 10. If I close this, close session, save project before closing, yes. And if I want to open that up again, I just double click on the Audacity project icon, icon and it brings the project back up as to where I was uh, last with it. Let's try the, the other one, see what that does. Yeah, it's brought it, it's brought it back. It should, it should uh, because I rendered it down to a file it's it's uh, it's connected it at that point but save as you go along you can always there's there's always the undo uh, function that you can you can remove stuff from um yeah okay so that's um that's it probably as much as you kind of for this stage there's a lot more that we could go into and that's why we have youtube <laughs> so uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions post them up on the whatsapp group i'm very happy to uh, you know if you've got any audio um you know if one thing maybe in the future that we can do if we carry on with this is is look at you know kind of getting some better audio equipment and if you're a student and you've got access via the university and you can get access to the av loans and things like that Go and get them, get them out, book them out, you know, play with them. Um, and, and you, you know, you, you, you'll find by doing it, you'll learn by doing it. And the, but the most important thing, stop the share. The most important thing is to, um, uh, listen and being able to listen is, it will tell you more of, of anything. One, one of the things, just a, a couple of tips in terms of the recording that we did on Saturday, um, there's a, you, there's a tendency when you first start recording is that you're concentrating on what you're trying to say and the microphone drifts away from you. So a number of people were kind of away from the turning away from the, the, the recorder. <clears throat> I made the mistake really of not holding the recorder myself because I could keep that straight. So when you're interviewing somebody else, 
just watch where your hand goes. It drops down and you're not pointing the microphone at them. And microphones are very sensitive to the direction. They need to be pointed at the source of the sound. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll end up getting that bin lorry that's in the background or that couple who's talking in the background and you won't be getting the talk of the person. <laughs> you get the sound of the fountain. You won't get the sound of the person. The closer you can get to the source of the sound, the better the quality that will be as well. And the other one is, is leave it running for a, you know 20 seconds after you've spoken to somebody. Just, you know, kind of if, if you just hold it off in the side or something, if you, you, you want to move away from somebody, um, that's fine. Uh, it just when it comes to editing, if it's too close, if you press stop too soon, it's very abrupt. And what you find you can't do is you can't find those nice smooth edit points where you want to kind of make that transition. What you end up with is kind of jumps uh, between it. But again, you'll hear that back when you're listening to stuff that you're editing and you record, you're recording and editing as well. Um, okay. Um, I think that sounds all right. The next video I'll do is going to be about WordPress and just go through the background of that. Uh, and then later in the week, hopefully we've got to catch up. I'll send the link around for this once I've posted it up onto YouTube. Uh, and uh, if there's any other things that you think that we can be doing in the meantime as well, or I can help with, just let me know. But uh, I will, uh, I will see you shortly. Right, where's the stop record? <laughs>